please silence your computer. Or play something more festive. Play something more festive. have to wear the white polo. I'm just saying. keeping this room in line much harder than keeping kindergarten in line. Bora. I can I can do that. Can you actually go grab two for the coaches? Thank you. stop crying or do I have to wipe tears away? Thank you. We say his last name, Xander Wheel. Okay. For Wednesday's elimination game, UC Irvine will be the home team. Texas will be the visiting team for the elimination game on Wednesday. Do you want to go police? No hitting, no, no touching, no hitting. We got a kindergarten teacher here if she needs to keep you guys apart. No hitting each other. Sit you in a corner, Aaron. <laughs> there you go. Not a timeout, but a think about it chair. You know, on the bottom, everybody's name plate is upside down. But, you know, 
there's three sides. So kind of hard with that triangle. Well, it's true. I don't like taxis. I actually just don't like you. That's really what it's about, Kendall. I was trying to join you over there. That's what I was doing. I know Augie got upset. He had to turn around and show it to everybody. We got, we got Coach Gillespie's name right, though. You know that? You see Irvine is on their way. Representing UC Irvine, head coach Mike Gillespie, outfielder Chris Polino, and third baseman Taylor Sparks. Coach, if you'd begin with an opening statement. Well, this game was, uh, was, was surprisingly a close score because I, I promise you it felt like a root canal. Uh, we got out everything. Uh, we, I mean, we, we, I think, uh, particularly once uh, Bueller came into the game, uh, he pitched like a first rounder waiting to happen, and Taylor Sparks is not going to use use me as his agent. I'm going to be Bueller's agent. Um, I think Vanderbilt was very impressive up and down their lineup. Uh, they executed, um, and uh, the, I, th I think the score just wasn't indicative of, of of the difference between the two teams tonight. So we'll show up on Wednesday try to give a better account of ourselves on Wednesday. We'll open the floor for, the qu for questions. Please remember to introduce yourself and affiliation in the front. Aaron Fitt, Baseball America. Coach, I think they had five stolen bases tonight. Obviously, their, their speed gave you guys fits. Um, how do you defend against that uh, ne next time if you play these guys again? Well, I mean, I'd have to go through one by one, I, I think. Uh, certainly, uh, I mean, I, I, I know for sure that one came on a ball. They were running, pitches in the dirt, so we didn't give our chances, our, ourselves a chance to throw. We pitched out at least once and uh, when they were running and couldn't execute the throw. So now we're talking about three. And uh, 
I'd, ha I'd have to go through one. I'm, I'm, look, I'm not overly alarmed by that. I'm really not. I, uh, they do run. They run really well. Um, I, I mean, typically, uh, the numbers don't lie on this. We, we, we don't, the, the, giving up the stolen base has not been a problem, not been an issue. We are typically quick to the plate. Our catcher typically throws well. Um, so I, I think I think that this what you saw here tonight was not uh, going into. If, if we were to play them again, that would that would for, look, we know we're going to deal with how well they run, but that would not be the that would not be the number one thing we'd be concerned about. I, I, I think we can I think we can handle ourselves pretty good on the running game. Kendall. Ken Rogers, perfect game. This is just for the players. Is that you guys seem to be able to capitalize against some clutch hits when BD was in the game, but once Bueller kind of came in, he kind of got you off your game. I guess just what did you guys see from him and just uh, what was he doing to kind of keep you off balance? Chris, can you begin, please? Um, yeah, I think um, we had a good approach against BD. Um, he tends to be wild. Um, we were disciplined, and then Bueller came in the game. Um, he pounded the strike zone. He was throwing pretty hard. Um, he had good command of his off speed too, so he was just, I know he was on. Yeah, uh, once Bueller came in the game, he he just executed. Um, we just we just didn't play the way we usually play, and uh, our at bats just weren't what they usually are, especially from BD to Bueller. I mean, uh, we chase a lot more with Bueller. Uh, he executed uh, pitchers' pitches against us, and uh, it just we just didn't execute uh, as well against Bueller. Here in the third row. Shotgun Spratling, College Baseball Daily. Uh, Chris and Taylor, you guys are a pretty energetic bunch. Um, after you guys got the lead, you guys seemed like you are going crazy in the dugout. Uh, did it feel like when after they retook the lead, what, what was the energy like in the dugout? Uh, did it feel like it was uh, as uh, a bigger deficit than it was, like Skip said. Um, yeah, I mean, after the four-run lead, we or the four-run inning, we uh, were pretty fired up. I think um, we had a couple innings where we got a couple lead-off hitters on, and we squandered some opportunities. And I think the momentum started to shift, and there might have been some lull of energy in the dugout, and we had some long innings on defense. So I think we could have, you know, if we had quick innings and kept the energy up, we would have had a more fight. Yeah, I mean, the energy was, at, was of course, the best after the four-run inning. I mean, um, after that, like Chris was saying, the long defensive innings uh, took away a little bit from our momentum. So it took us a little bit to get fired up in the dugout. It took us more, took a more effort to get more energy in the dugout than obviously it would be when she had the lead, obviously. But um, yeah. I mean, the energy just wasn't what it was through the whole game, and uh, uh, and the momentum what just wasn't there for us. Did you guys feel like you had a, a bigger hole than you necessarily have? You're down by one, and then you play those two runs. Um, I think for us to come back the first time, uh, we felt pretty confident, and then for us to go back down again, uh, one and then two runs, it seemed like it was it was going to take a lot, especially Bueller was starting to throw well, and he kind of felt like he was on a roll, and there was just a lack of momentum. But um, I think if we played them again, we wouldn't have a problem coming back. We got time for two more questions. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, student athletes, for joining us. UC Irvine will be the designated home team on Wednesday in the elimination game against Texas. Vanderbilt will be in shortly. The players representing them will be Walker Bueller, Dansby Swanson, and Xander Wheel.
Watch out for plenty. I've heard Dansbury, I've heard Doggers. I don't know. They're not surprised. Representing Vanderbilt, head coach Tim Corbin. For the student athletes, relief pitcher Walker Bueller, Dansby Swanson, and Xander Wheel. Coach, if you'd begin with an opening statement. Well, I don't, I don't think it's to anyone's surprise. I, I think the game uh, turned around when Walker came in, Walker Bueller. Uh, it was a, a momentum change and uh, pounded the strike zone from the minute he got in there till the minute the game finished. Um, very, very impressive, uh, very uh, mature approach to the game. Uh, I like the way he came back from last week because he had more of a, an earlier exit, but uh, I, I knew bringing him in today, it felt like the, the first game of the year when he came in after Tyler against Long Beach State and did some similar things. Um, we were opportunistic, uh, middle part of the game. We started off with a short game a little bit and scratched some runs and uh, were able to, to get a couple big hits with Dansby and, and Xander there late. Um, so, uh, you know, well-played game, beat a very good team. Open the floor for questions. Third row. Walker, could you sort of talk about your approach tonight coming out of the bullpen? I know that's something you've done a couple times this year, but uh, was that something you were expecting to do, come in behind BD tonight? And, and, and um, yeah, Coach Coach Brown and Coach Corbin told me to be ready. Um, but, you know, you, you expect your guys to, to go out and perform as well as they can. And, and luck, you know, I was, I was happy I got to pick them up. Um, it would be great for us all year, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think I was ready. And I think doing that a couple times throughout the year also helps. You're more comfortable doing it. Fourth row in the back. Yeah, Pat Borsey with the New York Times. It's for Dansby. Uh, it's no secret the ball doesn't carry well here. That uh, the ball you hit for the double, you think he had a chance to go out when you hit it? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I well, I hit it. I knew I hit it well, but um, just always run hard out of the box, and whatever happens, happens. And so I don't even know if it did hit the fence. I honestly still don't know. So Very tall. Very tall. I knew I should have done those push-ups last night. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just when you hit, just run hard out of the box, and because with this, with the way the wind plays here, you. You never know what's going to happen. Here in the front. Aaron Fit, Baseball America, Walker. Um, I think you had a number of strikeouts elevating the fastball and then kind of changing the eye level with a with breaking ball. Was that, that kind of characteristic of the way you usually attack, or is that a specific approach for this game? Yeah, I think uh, I think sometimes some balls get up on me unintentionally, and then sometimes you do it intentionally. I don't, I don't think any of those were intentional, to be honest with you. Um, but in this park, you can get away with a ball up in the air, you know, because it, it plays gigantic. Um, so I think you kind of have less fear of spraying a ball up because you don't feel like you're going to get hurt as much as you may at, at a smaller ballpark. Third row. Uh, Nick Cole from the Tennessee and Walker. Um, Really, the only trouble he ran into there was in the eighth inning, you know, the hit by pitch and a walk. And then Brownie came out and spoke with you, and you got a three pitch strike out there. Could you just sort of give us a little insight into what that conversation was like for you guys? Um, you know, every time he come out, he comes out there. He just uh, tries to make me laugh and tries to make me smile and, and relaxes me. And uh, you know, it, it obviously worked. It, it helped out. And uh, I wouldn't say the wheels were spinning, but you're in the College World Series, and you just walked a kid and, and hit a kid. Um, so it's nice to have a guy that can come out there and really settle you down like that. We've got time for two more questions here in the front row to start. Uh, Brandon Speck, Fox Sports uh, South. Coach, it seems like it seems like B's doing uh, kind of all over the place. Is there something he's doing mechanically there, hitting a couple of batters, something he can he can change? And and secondly, do you think there's an outing that, that you guys are waiting on, kind of brooding in the pot where he's going to have like one of those Xavier games where he's going to just blow the doors off somebody? Well, I mean, I always think that when, when Tyler pitches. I, I think it's a situation where um, you end up like that and you start steering the ball a little bit and the ball gets away from you and you try a little bit harder. I mean, uh, I, I think all pitchers have been there. It, it's not an easy thing. And, you know, as I told him when I walked out there, it's the last thing I want to do as a coach to 
to take them out there. But w we needed to change the pace of the game at that point. And, uh, you know, you might let a guy like that go a little bit longer. But, uh, you know, it was a point in the game where, you know, we were losing by two, wanted to keep the game right there because we felt like if we could turn it around, we were, we were going to hit the ball well enough. We had some hard strikes that were caught, and we just felt like we were going to swing the bat. One final question. Shotgun Spratling, College Baseball Daily. Coach, how, how does your ch coaching change when you have such a luxury of having so many good arms? Well, you got good arms, but y you want to you wanna keep the game close as well. Uh, I, I don't know if it changes that much. I mean, I, I think the, uh, the luxury is that we can go into the bullpen a little bit quicker, and it never feels like any of these kids. We, you know, we take a, a back, you know, a, a step back, you know, whether it's Walker or whether it's Ravenel or whether it's Stone or whether it's Jared Miller or whether it's Brian Miller. I mean, we've got some arms that haven't pitched yet, Tyler Ferguson. So I, I think just coming into this this thing, we just told the kids, as far as roles were concerned, it, it was it was up for grabs. We were just going to do what we had to do from a skill set standpoint to match up against the skill set of the team in order to put ourselves in a in an advantageous situation. Uh, but you know, I think of them all the same. You know, I, we don't label them as one, twos, and threes. They're all pretty damn good, and uh, you know, like what they're capable of doing. All right, thank you, Coach, as well as the Vanderbilt student-athletes. For individual interviews, please speak with Kyle Parkinson of Vanderbilt.